Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Pythonic Accountant. Today we're going to take a look at a library called Requests. This is one you may have heard of or may have seen before in one of my previous videos, but I thought it'd be good to start diving into some of the libraries just to show examples of how they work, how you can use them, how easy it is. So Requests is really powerful, really useful, probably one of the, the most popular non-standard libraries. Uh, the documentation is here on the docs.python-request.org and it gives you some really basic examples of how to use it. But basically requests allows you to go and get data from websites um, and you can get just the underlying HTML. You can use it to interact with uh, APIs and we'll show you uh, both of those examples uh, today. So let's do a basic request from yahoo.com just to show what that looks like. So first we have to import requests into our environment. And if you don't have requests already installed, then you can just pip install requests, it's really easy to do. Now we're gonna set our URL as the yahoo.com, which this is the yahoo.com page. I've already searched for Tesla on here. Uh, but the basic yahoo.com page, uh, we're gonna feed it into this uh, r equals request.get, get the URL. And if we just check what R gives us back, it'll give us a 200 code if it worked right. And that means uh, 200 code is basically a, a good response from um, any HTML request. It means that we got a connection and we got data back. So I'm gonna pull the first uh, 200 characters uh, from the response just to show you that it looks like the underlying HTML. And sure enough, you know, we can change this to show the first 500 and you'll see uh, this is not that useful in the current format. There's another library that's super useful uh, called Beautiful Soup, and that makes it a lot easier to parse and pull information out of uh, HTML, uh, but we're not going to cover Beautiful Soup today. But just know that Beautiful Soup will make it really easy to pull um, you know, information out of HTML. Now, what's great is Yahoo Finance and many other websites have uh, APIs, which make uh, makes it accessible to... Uh, computer programs like Python to be able to get data in a much easier method. And so I went to Yahoo uh, Finance API.com and learned more about it. And this is a pretty awesome service. You have a bunch of different um, URL uh, endpoints is what they're called. And these endpoints give you different uh, types of information back in a format called JSON. We're just going to show the quote uh, endpoint today and you have to get an API key which is very easy to get you can just go and uh, sign in and you get a free API key uh, from signing in you just go click and authorize and um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do this API call so the URL is now HTTPS yfapi.net and we're using this endpoint the, the v6 finance quote and I actually got instructions on how to uh, how to get this quote uh, using the instructions here. Uh, basically, it says, how do you use Finance API in Python? So super easy. And I just followed basically the code here. And so what we are doing is giving it that basic URL and then our query string, uh, we're doing the two symbols, Apple and Tesla. So let's get quotes for those. And um, it requires you to put in this header, which is uh, my API key. Don't go steal it. And then um, now I'm going to do requests. I'm going to grab the URL, headers as headers, parameters as the query strings. And now we should have uh, 200 results. Let's just check that real quick. And sure enough, we've got 200. And let's just show you what the, the result looks like just in plain text real quick. R.text. And then I'll show you how to actually pull it into a nice Python format. So the, the straight up text is not as useful, but if you're familiar with uh, Python and specifically the like dictionary format, this is what's called JSON. And JSON is a really common and popular data format that we can pull in and we can actually call r.json. And what we'll do here is I'll show you what it looks like if we do r.json. This is going to give us back the full response. So I can you know, kind of scroll through. You can see lots of data in here. Uh, but what we can do is we can say, you know what? I don't want all this data. I just want to get the actual quote of what it's currently the ask price for the two results. So since I put it in order of Apple and Tesla, 
I know that I have two uh, results in the result uh, value here. The first one is going to be uh, the Apple, and the second one is going to be Tesla. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close this out. I'm going to say result is r.json, and I'm going to pull the quote result and results, and then that's going to give my list of the two results. I'm going to save the ask for each of these results into Apple and Tesla, and let's just see what those prices come back as. Boom, Apple is 155.10, Tesla is 802, and if we go over here and see what the price is, and yeah, that's pretty much it, the 801.89, so pretty cool. So there you have it, that is a very basic primer on the request library, definitely recommend checking it out, it's super useful, super cool, and we uh, will see you on the next one.